Thank you, Gabriele. So more than closing, I'll try to uh, try to summarize what has been said, what I think are the most interesting aspects that we have talked about this afternoon. Mara, if you could go back to the first... Thank you. So, you can see there's an iceberg here. This is um, the most appropriate metaphor to identify what a sub-supplier chain is and what the knowledge is nowadays that we have of these kind of uh, supply chains, the uh, chain values of a company. Just like uh, of an iceberg, we just see a small piece. In the same way, when we talk about uh, supply chains, especially of huge companies, we often only see the first ring of the chain. And we are unable to see further or we have a very vague and uh, lacking knowledge of the whole supply chain. So if we actually want to understand the whole uh, iceberg and uh, how big the iceberg is, and if it can represent, well, at least for us, an opportunity to improve uh, living and working conditions of those that work in the supply chain. I think it is important to use what Gabriele was calling earlier the, the, the toolkit. Use, make use of the tools that international tools that are available to us so that we can uh, put together all our, our knowledge. So my question, how can we get information on uh, on the supply chain of a company. So this afternoon we have we had Kirsty. she just explained to us how important the guidelines by OECD are on multinational companies and how the effects can contribute to uh, an improved knowledge of the supply chain. We also have the guiding principles, UN guiding principles on business and human rights, which are um, a key tool. And we also have the ILO tripartite declaration on multinationals. And regarding the ILO, in 2016, ILO attempted to pass a resolution on uh, decent work in the supply chain, global supply chains. So what does that mean? It means that in the course of the last years, and especially in the last five years, this uh, issue of how can we analyze and how can we improve our knowledge of the supply chain has become a key issue for us as a trade union, but not only, also for all those companies that really want to be sustainable and not only talk about sustainability. Concerning the tools, the United Nations tools, one of the objectives of sustainability Sustainable development, one of which have been mentioned, and which currently are attracting the attention of governments and companies, institutions. One of the twelve targets of the uh, sustainable development goals actually says to encourage big, especially multinational companies to adopt uh, sustainable practices and integrate information on sustainability into their uh, reporting sci cycle. Additionally, the UN's Global Compact 
published a guide to traceability, a practical approach to advance sustainability in global supply chains. So we, we also have these tools by the UN uh, that are available to us. Uh, as you can see here, I have included photographs because we, we have we not talked about this this afternoon, so I wanted to mention them just uh, to offer a, a complete information. And uh, this afternoon we also had Pietro that talked about GRI and about reporting standards, sustainability reporting standards, on which I personally had the opportunity to uh, participate on some work groups organized by GRI. I had the uh, opportunity to analyze further in depth uh, some of the topics. So I call them indicators, GRI indicators, I think they are uh, like a panel of colors, an infinite and vast panel of colors. It offers us uh, extremely useful information for our activities. SA8000, uh, Federico was talking about this earlier, it's another tool that we as a trade union have used and used in the past and it is useful for us from a sustainability, social sustainability point of view. And concerning uh, my opinion, I think I'd like to briefly mention two tools, two different tools. Uh, these tools have been developed by ISO, which is the International Normative uh, Institution. And we're talking about ISO 26000 and ISO 20400. Pietro gave us a very clear picture of how standards can be useful for our job when um, they give us, they bring an added value to what we consider uh, as an objective, the improvement of working conditions when they don't interfere with bargaining and with the rights, workers' rights. So these two um, ISO guidelines, ISO 26000 and ISO 20400, represent some of the rare occasions during which ISO managed to work together with the trade unions to develop a s international standard that could be used to face some of the social topics. ISO is known by many of us, always known as uh, an international institution, an international organization, which regulates, for example, the formats of p paper sheets or the cables for uh, to recharge mobile phones. But since 2005, even uh, due to the, the promising market uh, opportunities, ISO started to develop social standards which were not only technical standards tied to um, physical, let's say, aspects, but ISO instead started uh, establishing uh, technical committees that could face social issues. And the two standards I was um, mentioning earlier and which could be included in this uh, toolkit that uh, as well to understand the uh, supply chain of a company are the uh, ISO 26000 standard guidelines on social responsibility published by ISO in 2010 
and the standard ISO 20400 published last year on uh, sustainable uh, purchases, procurement. So I don't want to, uh, I want to be brief, even because every single one of us needs a coffee break right now. I don't want to uh, be your torturer, but just two uh, brief comments. ISO 26000 is concerning guidelines on social responsibility is a standard that attempts to define what the approach of a sustainable organization should be. And uh, within this approach, a special attention should be given to the supply chain of an organization. When this uh, standard was developed, not only ISO took part, but also GRI did, OECD took part to the development. And uh, the group that would then become the United Nations uh, Guiding Principles uh, Drafting Group and a series of other institutions, uh, international institutions too. In addition, of course, uh, to the Trade Union uh, International Confederation. So the the topic of the supply chains uh, of and the value chains of a company is uh, certainly being uh, included in this uh, standard. Well, the second standard I was talking about, ISO 20400, was published uh, last year. And uh, the attention is focused on how a company can actually implement sustainability policies through uh, procurement. Therefore, the focus has shifted on from from mapping stakeholders of a company and has shifted towards a guidelines on how to uh, implement a sustainable purchases and procurement and lastly arriving to the supply chains uh, which clients use uh, to ask for uh, which are the target of the procurement requests so this was only to explain that these are the two standards ISO standards that could be useful tools that we could use I believe that This is a, a picture of a Roman uh, mosaic. As you can see, it has many small uh, pieces, colored pieces, form a picture, a beautiful picture of a sea turtle. And if we put together many small pieces of knowledge and use various tools, that we, we possess in our toolkit, we will be able to start, at least to start to imagine and understand how big that iceberg is. Thank you.